Book of Mormon geography has been a source of debate for years, both inside and outside of the LDS or Mormon faith. Some groups attempt to place the Book of Mormon in the Great Lakes area of the United States, also claiming that Joseph Smith, the book's translator, knew where Book of Mormon events took place. They go so far as to say that he received authoritative revelation on the geography of the Book of Mormon and that those who do not agree with their conclusions are disparaging the prophet. This is a bold assertion and one that will be shown to be an unsubstantiated claim. In fact, it is those who ascribe no loyalty to any one theory are the ones that are closest in line with the LDS Church's teachings as the Church takes no official position on such issues at this time. These groups often are referred to as putting forth the heartland model or theory meaning that the Book of Mormon took place in what we would reference today as the area comprising the middle portions of the United States. Despite these claims, the LDS Church has made official statements, contrary to these assertions, stating that there has never been a conclusive revelation on Book of Mormon geography. In 1938, President Joseph F. Smith was asked to approve statements pointing out Book of Mormon events. He declined, saying that the Lord had not yet revealed it. A more complete view of the historical record will show that several theories were considered and analyzed during the early days of the LDS Church by a variety of church leaders. Some of those theories were even explored by Joseph Smith, prophet and president of the church, and the individual who is often referred to as a credible source on such matters. Joseph Smith made many statements regarding Book of Mormon geography in his life, which could be interpreted as placing the events of this ancient text all over North and South America. It is the practice of those espousing this heartland model to not only evaluate and utilize the statements from Joseph Smith which agree with their geographical theory, while ignoring statements which place the Book of Mormon in other regions, including Mesoamerica or elsewhere in the Western Hemisphere. While acknowledging the fact that Joseph Smith drew correlations between many native cultures throughout the Western Hemisphere and Book of Mormon cultures, they seem to represent a fluid opinion, while offering no definitive or indisputable declaration through prophetic authority. Here are a few examples of this which could lead some to place the Book of Mormon events in or around Mesoamerica. In 1841, the prophet Joseph Smith was given a two-volume set of books written by John Lloyd Stevens, that told about Stevens' travels in Mesoamerica and the discovery of ancient ruins and vanished civilizations. These were purchased by Bishop John Bernheisel in New York and delivered by Wilford Woodruff to Joseph's hands around October of that year. These books were filled with pictures that were drawn by Frederick Catherwood, an artist who accompanied Stevens. These pictures revealed temples and cities that had been lost in the jungles of Mesoamerica for centuries. Joseph Smith wrote a letter regarding these books to Bishop Bernheisel in November, which read, quote, I received your kind present by the hand of Elder Woodruff, and feel myself under many obligations for this mark of your esteem and friendship, which to me is the more interesting, as it unfolds and develops many things that are of great importance to this generation and corresponds with and supports the testimony of the Book of Mormon. I have read the volumes with the greatest interest and pleasure, and must say that of all the histories that have been written pertaining to the antiquities of this country, it is the most correct, luminous, and comprehensive." End quote. There are also many statements that were published in the Church's publication of the day, The Times and Seasons. In 1842, it was said that this periodical would be, quote, the most interesting and useful religious journal of the day, end quote. Joseph Smith worked as the editor-in-chief of Times and Seasons from March to November of 1842. He would also author many articles and publish them under his own guidance. He wrote the following, quote, Stevens and Catherwood's researches in Central America abundantly testify of this thing, the stupendous ruins, the elegant sculpture, and the magnificence of the ruins of Guatemala and other cities, 
corroborate this statement and show that a great and mighty people men of great minds, clear intellect, bright genius, and comprehensive designs inhabited this continent. Their ruins speak of their greatness. The Book of Mormon unfolds their history. The Mexican records agree so well with the words of the Book of Ether, found by the people of Limhi, which is contained in the Book of Mormon, in relation to the confounding of languages, end quote, and included a lengthy extract from the Book of Ether. The editorial continues by claiming that, quote, the coincidence is so striking that further commentary is unnecessary, end quote. One quote from Joseph Smith contained in the Wentworth letter, which has been used by North American theorists to support their theory, actually has geographic implication that extends beyond the borders of the United States. The original letter sent to Mr. Wentworth had the words, this continent, and not American continent. The Times and Seasons letter also had, quote unquote, this continent. This continent is a term or reference that can encompass all of Central and North or South America. From the Webster's Dictionary of Joseph Smith's Day, quote, one of the great continents, it being about 9,000 miles in length, its breadth at Darien, Panama, is narrowed to about 45 miles, but at the northern extremity, Canada, is nearly 4,000 miles. From Darien, or Panama, to the north, the continent is called North America, and to the south is called South America, end quote. Joseph Smith also used the term this continent to describe Mesoamerica. Quote, the Mexican records agree so well with the Book of Ether. Here, then, we have two records found upon this continent that go to support the words of eternal truth, end quote. Joseph Smith also wrote, Mr. Stevens' great developments of antiquities are made bare to the eyes of all the people by reading the history of the Nephites in the Book of Mormon. They lived about the narrow neck of land, which now embraces Central America, with all the cities that can be found. Since our extract was published from Mr. Stevens' Incidents of Travel, we have found another important fact relating to the truth of the Book of Mormon. The city of Zarahemla, burnt at the crucifixion of the Savior and rebuilt afterwards, stood upon this land. It is certainly a good thing for the excellency and veracity of the divine authenticity of the Book of Mormon that the ruins of Zarahemla have been found where the Nephites left them. End quote. Once these discoveries in Mesoamerica were set forth by the prophet and other leaders of the church, they were commanded by God to present discoveries relating to ancient texts and civilizations, including those proposed as support for the authenticity of the Book of Mormon to the world. According to a revelation from God, Joseph Smith was to establish a museum in Nauvoo to house, quote, precious things, such as antiquities, as well as inscriptions and hieroglyphics, for the purpose of establishing a museum of the great things of God, ancient records, manuscripts, paintings, and hieroglyphics, end quote. Because these statements seem to contradict some theories, such as the heartland of America theory, these proponents must find a way to dismiss them. They have sought to do this in two main ways. One, claiming Joseph did not author the articles in the Times and Seasons because he was in hiding during the time when only three of these articles were published. Two, that the articles were not authored by Joseph Smith because he signed them as editor, not Joseph Smith. As we examine the evidence, you will see that even these arguments failed to stand after a little scrutiny. Joseph Smith was in hiding during the time the editorials were written on September 1st, September 15th, and October 15th, yet we have no indication that he ever gave up his duties as prophet or chief editor. Joseph Smith's journals are available, and in them he gives an account of what he did. His journal claims that Joseph did all of the following, spent many days at home, posed for a portrait for several days, wrote that it was business as usual. He had several meetings with John Taylor, who worked at the printing office and helped publish the Times and Seasons, and counseled him on the printing office. 
He gave sermons and so on. While he would occasionally leave and go in hiding when there was call for such, for the most part it was business as usual for Joseph. We have no indication that he abandoned any of his duties, including his position as editor-in-chief with the Times and Seasons. Wilfred Woodruff and John Taylor, both of whom helped Joseph with printing the Times and Seasons, were stricken with sickness and had been absent from the printing office in September during the time when articles inferring the Book of Mormon as having Mesoamerican connections were printed. This would have left the prophet to bear most of the editorial burden alone for an extensive period of time. Even if he was in hiding and did not fulfill his duties, there are many other articles and letters that are being ignored by promoters of the Heartland Theory, which were published by Joseph Smith that placed the Book of Mormon in Mesoamerica and elsewhere. We must look at all the evidence and not just what agrees with us. How do we know that the ed given at the end of these Times and Season articles was Joseph Smith as editor? Joseph Smith began to fill the position of editor-in-chief in March of 1842. He wrote, This paper commences my editorial career. I alone stand responsible for it, and shall do for all papers having my signature henceforward. I am not responsible for the publication or arrangement of the former paper. The matter did not come under my supervision. End quote. Joseph Smith stated he was completely responsible for the contents of the Times and Seasons while he was editor and would add his signature as evidence of this. Since this was a publication, a handwritten signature was not practical, so editors would use a signature block to add their signatures to the periodicals as a stamp of approval. Joseph Smith's signature appeared in all editions of the Times and Seasons save the August 1, 1842 edition. His signature is found in all of the editions which contain articles suggesting a connection to the Book of Mormon with Mesoamerica, signifying that according to Joseph Smith's own words, he is responsible for it. This means that he read, if not wrote, these articles, found them to be worthy of printing, and published them in this church publication. Now on to the question, who authored these articles? Some of these articles in the Times and Seasons were unsigned, so it's difficult to say for certain who wrote them. But several of these articles on Mesoamerica and the Book of Mormon are signed. An article dating July 15, 1842, is one of these. It states that, quote, The magnificence of the ruins of Guatemala and other cities corroborate this statement and show that a great and mighty people, Men of great minds, clear intellect, bright genius, and comprehensive designs inhabited this continent. Their ruins speak of their greatness. The Book of Mormon unfolds their history. Signed, Ed. We see that it is signed as Ed. This is an abbreviation for editor, which is the position that Joseph Smith held during this time. We have record from Joseph Smith himself that he uses Ed as a signature on other occasions. On April 1st, 1842, there is an article called Try the Spirits, which is only signed as Ed, but we learn from the history of the church that Joseph Smith authored this article. So we have a direct connection between Joseph Smith and the Ed signature of the Times and Seasons. If we look at the two unsigned articles written on September 15th and October 15th, 1842, and use word print analysis, we're able to determine who is the probable author. Every writer is unique in their speech and leaves a fingerprint of words when they write. This analysis has recently been used to determine that the famous author, J.K. Rowling, published under a different name and has also been used to determine that the Book of Mormon was not written by Joseph Smith but by multiple authors. These analytical methods were used on the two articles in question and both studies found conclusively that Joseph Smith authored them, or at least approved these articles for publication. One of these articles, which was published by the church-owned Neil A. Maxwell Institute at BYU, states, quote, Our analysis suggests that the editorials on Central American Ruins and the Book of Mormon, published during Joseph Smith's tenure as editor of the Times and Seasons, show a strong alignment with his personal writing style and the editorials to which he signed his name. Consequently, the evidence points to Joseph Smith as the author of the Central American editorials. 
even if the Central American editorials were a collaborative work. That still does not reduce the authoritative nature of the statements in the articles, since Joseph clearly stated that he took full responsibility for what was published in the paper under his editorship. So whether he penned the words in their entirety, or partially, or even not at all, he authorized the publication of the words and thereby made them his own. Since he stated about the content of the paper, I alone stand for it. Claims that Joseph Smith was unaware of what was written in the Central American editorials, or what he considered their geographical opinions and interpretations to be inconsistent with his revelations, is not sustained by the historical and stylometric evidence. Those who seek to discount the authorship of these articles also argue that it was John Taylor who actually authored these articles. Again, there is indisputable letters from Joseph Smith which show Joseph Smith at this time making a connection with the Book of Mormon being in Mesoamerica. So even if this was the case, we still have evidence of Joseph Smith supporting a Mesoamerican setting for the Book of Mormon. Even if John Taylor wrote the articles and publicly contradicted a statement of Joseph Smith, it would seem incongruent for Joseph Smith to appoint Taylor as the editor-in-chief of the Times and Seasons only two weeks after then-Apostle John Taylor published such information. Yet this is exactly what happened. Joseph wrote a farewell note in the November 1842 Times and Seasons, which praised John Taylor and his competency as he appointed him as his successor as editor-in-chief. Quote, I have appointed Elder John Taylor, who is less encumbered and fully competent to assume the responsibilities of that office, and I doubt not, but that he will give satisfaction to the patrons of the paper. As this number commences a new volume, it also commences his editorial career. Joseph Smith, end quote. John Taylor later confirmed Joseph's previous content ownership with writing the following, quote, The patrons of the Times and Seasons will unquestionably be painfully disappointed on reading the above statement. We know of no one so competent as President Joseph Smith to fill the editorial chair, of which the papers that have been issued since he has been editor are sufficient evidence. We do not profess to be able to tread in the steps nor to meet the expectation of the subscribers of this paper so fully as our able, learned, and talented prophet, who is now retiring from the field, but as he has promised to us the privilege of referring to his writings, books, etc., together with his valuable counsel when needed, and also to contribute to its columns with his pen when at leisure, we are in hopes that with his assistance and other resources that we have at our command, that the times and seasons will continue to be a valuable periodical and interesting to its numerous readers. John Taylor, end quote. Taylor also states that Joseph Smith will allow them access to his quote-unquote books. This most certainly would include Stevens and Catherwood's books on the Mesoamerican travels. We see that he did not waste any time on using it, because in this very same issue, another article is written called, quote, Ruins recently discovered in Yucatan, Mexico, end quote, which draws parallels between the Book of Mormon and Mesoamerica. From that time forward, John Taylor continued to write articles and forward a Mesoamerica setting for the Book of Mormon. John Taylor and other apostles publicly taught and published a Mesoamerican setting for the Book of Mormon and were not corrected for teaching false doctrine. Not only was John Taylor not rebuked, but he and countless others, including Joseph Smith himself, continued to forward a Mesoamerican setting for the Book of Mormon. John Taylor wrote, This is a work, referring to the incidents and travels in Central America, that ought to be in the hands of every Latter-day Saint, corroborating, as it does, the history of the Book of Mormon. There is no stronger circumstantial evidence of the authenticity of the latter book that can be given than that contained in Mr. Stevens' works, end quote. There are many other men who held the exact same office, who had the exact same calling and mantle as Joseph Smith had. Why do we not rely on them when looking for the geography of the Book of Mormon? In addition to Joseph Smith, many of these men also placed the Book of Mormon in Mesoamerica. Brigham Young said, quote, I look forward to the time when the settlements of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints 
will extend right through the city of Old Mexico, and from thence on through Central America to the land where the Nephites flourished in the golden era of their history. End quote. John Taylor and Wilford Woodruff, both of who would be prophets of the church, wrote, quote, Stevens, in his Incidents of Travels in Central America, has thrown in a flood of testimony, and from the following statements, it is evident that the Book of Mormon does not give a more extensive account of large and populous cities than those discoveries now demonstrate to be even in existence, end quote. There are also LDS prophets who have placed the Book of Mormon in the entire Western Hemisphere, only in South America and elsewhere. It wasn't until later, as quoted before, that Prophet and President Joseph F. Smith disavowed that any discussion on the matter of geography was not revelation, and thus relegating such to be opinion, not doctrine. Multiple sources hold up a faithful position for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to view Book of Mormon geography as taking place outside of what is known today as the United States of America. With new discoveries came new conclusions, as members of the church at all levels seemed keen on finding secular or scientific support of the Book of Mormon. While pieces of information continue to be gathered from a variety of sources, no one theory group can claim divine authority for the declaration of Book of Mormon geography, especially when compelling sources leave room for many theories to exist in faithful discourse. It is the right and purview of the President and Prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to make such an authoritative claim binding on the world. In summary, the Church's official position on Book of Mormon geography is that there is no claim as to where the Book of Mormon took place, and that such has not been revealed. Prophets and apostles have speculated on its whereabouts since the beginning of the church, but there has never been a revelation concluding a discussion on the subject. These well-intentioned seekers of truth offer opinions that have been varied and sometimes contradict each other. However, if a group asserts that their Book of Mormon geography theory is the only theory that has divine approval, and that to distance or disagree with such a theory is to call in question one's faith, is to exact a sweeping judgment and condemnation that is not their right to exercise. There is little support in considering Book of Mormon geography as a matter of faithful discipleship. If one wishes to be considered a faithful member of the Church, there is room enough for multiple theories to be in play, as the Church or any of its leaders have made no official position endorsing one theory as the correct theory, or claiming divine revelation thus dismissing all other theories that would oppose such a revelation.